Today I do some backyard science, well, out on the road, to see if the placement of your Garmin has any impact on the altimeter reading. Alrighty, backstory on this one. Up in Bright the other week, when Slane, Maven and I were hanging out on the hills, watching the Herald Sun tour, we rode out in a large bunch from Bright. Now, I was just chit-chatting with one of the riders there, and we got onto hobbies and things like that. He happened to be a paraglider who'd sailed all around the world, sailed, flew, I'm not sure what those guys do, but they're death-defying anyway. Anyway, we got talking about him and uh, the technology they use, and then we got onto Garmin's as well. As the conversation went on, we both started talking about the accuracy of Garmin's and how we've seen a wide spread of what's reported on elevation for different rides. So this got us asking the question, does the placement of your Garmin affect the reading that it actually puts out? So a week before that, I pulled down all the data from the Cadell's People's Ride. I had a thousand samples of data with elevation, head unit type, etc. I've extracted all the activities between 110 and 116 kilometers in length, so they should have all ridden the same course and had pretty close to the same elevation. Here are the averages across all the different garments. So the Edge 1000 averaged 861 meters, the Edge 500 averaged 895 meters, the 510 average of 964 meters, the 520 868, 810 had 958 and the 820, 882. There's a bit of a spread there. And just for fun, I'll put in the element. The element was 833, and there was also the iPhone and the Android Strava, which pull the elevation from elsewhere, not the devices themselves, both reporting around 722 average. Not only was there a big spread of difference between the models of Garmin's, the actual spread before I whacked in the average was quite large as well. So for example, the Edge 810 recorded 719 versus nearly 1200 as the max for that same distance. That's a massive spread. So the only explanation we could come up with as we rode out of Bright discussing altimeters and the differences between the units, as you saw there, there was a bit of a spread, was how they're mounted, either flat, on an angle, or covered in. So I did jump on Google that night and do a search on this, and yes, this is a question a lot of people have asked, and there's a lot of theories going around, but I wanted to science it myself. So today I put it to the test outside. I did three runs of a route called Q Boulevard here in Melbourne, so what we've got here is an out and back course and zero flats over about 13.1 kilometers. So a really good test of this unit. So this afternoon at about 2.30, the conditions were quite stable for a few hours. So I got three runs in. The first run, I had the Garmin mounted on the front of the bike using one of my out the front mounts, pretty flat to the wind. And the elevation gain recorded was 186. Now flipping over to the Everesting calculator, whacking this segment into the Everesting calculator, it says the ascent gain should be about 180 meters. So 180, 186, that's pretty close. The next test, I took it off the front of the bike and I put this unit in my back jersey pocket. So then I rode out and back again and the timing was pretty good. I was within eight seconds of that without the head unit on, so we don't need to look at our devices all the time. That recorded an elevation of 155 meters gained. That's a little bit different. So for the last test, I did have a bit of fun. I taped over the hole and did the same test out and back with the unit on the front. What was quite funny is as I climbed the hill, it started putting me down the hill. Now, I expected this to go haywire and it did. One thing that was interesting though was the gradient was actually showing correctly. So on a 4% incline, it was showing 4%, but I was actually going down. I've got no idea of the separation between the gradient shown and the elevation calculated. It must be two different things or it might come from the maps. I don't quite know, but the last one was quite hilarious. So the term I'd use, once I tape that over, the unit shat itself. But what that does show is going to the extremes, you do get different readings. A lot of the online forums discuss the strong crosswind effect on the altitude reading of these. And effectively, that's what I was testing. So out the front, it was clear wind, but still quite a lot of wind coming past. Back pocket, zero wind, and taped over. Well, let's not discuss that. That was a bit of a useless test, but interesting nevertheless. So the question I have now, and I'm still yet to test this, and feel free if anyone's got the time, a flat Garmin versus a Garmin tilted up into the wind, plus also a bunch ride. Do you get different readings over the same course if you're in a bunch, getting different wind effects, versus riding by yourself or off the front? So from what I've seen today, the altimeters in these aren't too bad, but they're really not that accurate. And if your ride depends heavily on knowing what number that is, I'd be heading over to somewhere like everesting.cc and just checking how many laps of a segment you've got to do because you don't want to get to 8848, I think off the top of my head, and then find out you've done a little less or a little more than you need to. 
So as always, more science required, but I found that quite interesting today. Let us know in the comments below if you've had a chance to test this, or if you've got a segment that you know, just tilt your Garmin up or down a little bit. Tell me the results that you find. Could be really interesting to have a look. Okay, thanks for watching.